Good morning, my dear students. I am Mohammad Bahadin, working as an assistant professor in ISL Engineering College, which is affiliated to the Usman University in Hyderabad. So today, in this session, we are going to learn regarding the helical gears, double helical gears, or herringbone gears, and the what are the formulas is using. to solve the helical gear problem we are going to learn in these sessions so helical gear nothing but the teeth on the helical gear are cut at an angle to the face of the gear so let us see this figure the teeth on this gear are cut on the face of the teeth they making this some angle okay so let us see over here the teeth on the helical gear are cut and at an angle to the face of the gear when when these two teeth on the helical gear system engage contact start at the one end of the tooth and gradually spread the gear rooted until the teeth are fully engaged is it right so because this gradually engagement engagement make the helical gear operate much more smoothly and quiet than spur gear so this helical gears are used in the almost all car transmission in which we are using this helical gear so let us see over here the first thing is this is our gear and this one we can say that it is the axis of the gear what we can say here axis of the gear so this gear teeth are inclined in such way that they making this some angle they making the angle of alpha they making the angle of alpha this making the angle alpha we can say as helix angles what what we can say here helix angle so this helical gear are more smoothly compared to the spur gear so this helical gear carrying the heavier load this helical gear is carrying the maximum load compared to the spur gear okay dear as well as okay so because of angle of the teeth on this helical gear they create the thrust load what will create here it will this angle of the teeth the angle of the teeth on the helical gear they create the thrust load on the gear when they contact with the another gear so one is the gear another one is the pinion if this gear and pinion if it is contact then the angle of helical gear if it is contact they produce the thrust load in between these two gear so so let us see over here so they can this gear are mounted perpendicular to the shaft adjusting the rotating angle by the 90 degree okay and formative equivalent number of teeth in a helical gear or virtual number of the teeth let us see this figure this is our circle we are draw one solid object after that this is the axis of this helical gear we are cut the teeth in such way that they making the angle they making the angle over here this making the angle of beta over here the number of teeth it could be generate on the surface of this cylinder on the surface of the cylinder is having the equal radius to the equal radius of the curvature so let us see over here if you cut if you cut in such way that they making the same angle they making the angle of beta is it right from the major to the minor axis the tip of the minor axis the ellipse can be obtained ellipse can be obtained on this over here from above 
like this and below also like this so we are draw this ellipse over here so this is the diameter of the ellipse so the radius of curvature we have to use the formula is r is equal to diameter of the ellipse by 2 into cos square beta we have to use for the ellipse okay if you want to find out the virtual number of teeth z is equal to 2 pi r by pn so pn we know very well the normal pitch we can say that we have the formula pn is equal to pi into mole into cos beta 2 as it is pi as it is this r is the radius of curvature value how much is there d by 2 cos square beta just you to divide over here d by 2 cos square beta into the normal pitch value we have pi into m into cos beta then if it is move above over here this two instead of bottom they move above over here too again this is this is that nothing but d by module okay so over here we can represent this d by module into cos square beta so in which the students is having the confusion sir so what is the problem so first of all you need to cancel this term this pi and this pi will be cancelled over here clear i hope so you understood again this d by this module this d by module into okay cos square beta so after that this not cos square beta here instead of here we can represent here this is cos cube beta okay z is equal to d by m this d by m nothing but we can say that it is a z clear z by cos cube beta after that we need to find out the herringbone gear or sometime we can say that it is a helical gear so this herringbone gear is mainly used for carrying the heavier load purpose we are giving the more priority to the herringbone gear so here this gear this first gear and the second gear this helix angle are always act in opposite to each other and the resultant become zero over here this helical gear is more noisy as well as they carrying the maximum load compared to the single helical gear for a purpose so maximum heavy load if you want to carry so that's what you have to give the more priority to the double helical gear okay and the, we are designing the Lewis equation for the helical gear the load carrying capacity or strength of the helical gear in a helical gear the contact between this mating to this gradually increases starting at the one end and moving along the teeth over here so that are the line of the contact run diagonally across the each teeth so therefore in order to find the strength of the helical gear so ft, FT nothing but the tangential load is acting on the teeth okay for that reason we have to use the sigma d into cv into k into m n square into y so sigma d nothing but the static strength of the of the gear and cv nothing but we can say that levis factor or we can say as a velocity factor we can say that and k nothing but we can say as the load factor and m n square we can say as the normal module we can say that into y nothing but the form factor then sigma d as it is sigma d nothing but already we represent over here allowable static stress factor and cv nothing but the velocity factor and k nothing but the load factor and m n square nothing but the normal module or we can say if you want to find out the normal module we have the formula tangential module into cos beta so tangential force we have the formula is 2 into moment of torque by d so if you want to equate the equation ft equal to ft tangential force is equal to tangential to load tangential ft how much is there 2 mt by d equal to ten ft how much is there here ft is sigma d into cv into k into m n square into y clear after that this 2 mt by so if you divide this pitch diameter d is equal to module into z so we can represent over here instead of module m n by cos beta into z as it is clear 
then instead of d we can represent this value m n by cos beta into z equal to sigma d into c v into k into m n square into y okay so 2 m t if it is this cos beta if it is more above here it's make as a cos beta by m n into z equal to sigma d same as it is keep over here after that 2 m t into cos beta so just you need to divide this value over here this z as it is as well as sigma d into c v into k into y this m n square as it is cross this value m n clear if the basis are same if the power if the basis are same then power should be added 2 plus 1 it become as m n cube this 2 m t into cos beta by z into sigma d into c v into k into y so m here please write down here uh, cube cube under root of 2 m t into cos beta by sigma d into c v into k into y z so this is the value of m n already we have find out over here okay dear i hope so no one is having that doubt up to over here the same concept we need to follow for the formula for the helical gate how many formula we are using in the helical gate to solve the problem the first we have to use the lewis equation for the beam strength formula mn is equal to 2 mt into cw into cos beta by sigma d into cv into k into y into z or you can present here 3 cube root we can represent so if you want to refer this lewis equation for the beam strength you have to refer the page number 214 and equation is 12.24 b if you want to find out the torque we have the formula p is equal to 2 pi n into moment of torque by 1000 okay if you want to find out the wear factor then you have to refer this table number 12.21 page number 241 okay so cw equal to 1.15 if you want to find out the static strength then you have to refer this uh table number 12.7 page number 234 for the for the which type of the material is made of the pinion as well as for the gear if it is not given if it is gear the material for the gear as well as pinion it is not given then only you have to go for table number 12.7 and page number 234 after that we need to find out the velocity factor cv if the velocity is lesser than 5 meter per second you have to refer the cv value from the page number 12.25 a page Page number is two one four. If velocity factor v is from five from five to ten meter per second, then you have to use this formula. If the velocity factor if it is lies in between ten to twenty meter per second, you have to refer this equation from the page number two one four. Equation is twelve point two five c. If the velocity factor it is more than twenty meter per second, then you have to refer this formula. C v is equal to five point five five by five point five five plus under root of v from the page number twelve point two five d and page number two one four. and load factor we have the formula k is equal to b by m into n and according to agma value we have to refer the width p is b is equal to 1.15 pi into mn by sin beta refer the page number 12.23 and page number 213 k value is load factor value b by mn 1.15 pi by sin beta after that the same formula we have to follow over here okay and the form factor value we have y is equal to pi into y okay if the 14 1 by 2 in value of it is given for a form factor then you have to go for page number page number 204 and the equation is 12.5c okay for 20 degree full depth in value purpose we have to refer from the page number 204 and equation is 12.5d for 20 degree sub in value purpose you have to refer for 12.5e page number 204 equivalent number of teeth purpose we have to refer this z e value from page number 211 12.22 a okay if you want to find out the normal module is d by z cos beta from the page number 12.19 c page number 211 if you want to find out the normal circular pitch is you have to refer this page number 12.19 a and page number 211 Standard distance, if you want to find out in the uncurrented gear, so you have to go for page number 12.20, page number 211. If you want to find out the pitch circle diameter of the pinion as well as gear, d is equal to z into m n by cos theta from the page number 211 and 12.19e. Axial thrust, if you want to find out f a is equal to f t into 10 beta, you have to refer from page number 12.21, page number 211. If you want to find out the pitch line velocity, you have to refer from you have to refer the formula v is equal to pi dn by thousand. 
okay if you want to find out the if you want to design for the tangential load you have to refer the page number 12.24 a page number 214 clear i hope so you understood this same formula same concept you need to follow over here okay if you want to check the design for the vl load you have to use this formula d1 b into q into k by cos square beta i hope so no one is having the confusion up to over here if you have a small doubt regarding the sessions please write down the comment box and don't forget to subscribe my channel thank you dear